Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm Katie. Welcome to Last TV Gaming News, bringing you all the gaming news straight from South Korea. This week is a good week for PUBG fans, as the brand new snow strewn map of Vikendi is finally becoming available to play. Vikendi has been available on the PTR for some time now, but it is scheduled to go live this week. It's a 6x6 map with a snowy climate, which affects certain gameplay elements, like players and vehicles leaving tracks behind them. The cold weather will also affect the way players can maneuver vehicles and introduces the snowmobile. Vikendi is available on the mobile and PC live clients from the 19th. The map is set to be coming soon for consoles. And after launching at the beginning of the month, it appears that the much hyped Blade and Soul Revolution has been racking up some impressive numbers for Netmarble. A mobile app market analysis report provided by Mobile Index Report stated that Blade and Soul Revolution brought in 6 billion won, approximately 5.3 million US dollars, in its first week of sales. It also found that it was installed on 1.14 million devices on its first day, with an average use time of around two and a half hours per player. The game is most popular with people in their 30s, with a male to female user ratio of about 70 to 30. Blade and Soul Revolution was finally released in Korea on December 6, after a long wait for fans plagued by numerous delay announcements. As always, we'll keep you updated on any news regarding a global release. But there's also some bad news for Netmarble, as the Seoul High Court has officially dismissed their appeal against their Fair Trade Commission fines from earlier this year. As we first reported back in spring, Netmarble was one of the three prominent Korean developers in hot water with the Fair Trade Commission due to misleading loot box practices. The FCC declared that the companies have been deceitful with their advertisement of randomized in-game items to their customers. Netmarble in particular was called out for their loot box practices in their titles Magu Magu, Monster Taming and Everybody's Marble. Netmarble appealed the fine they were given, but it was reported last week that the Seoul High Court has decided to dismiss the appeal. It's a good thing they've got that Blade and Soul money to fall back on. And in other monstrously popular MMORPG news, Smilegate's Lost Ark has partnered with NVIDIA. Lost Ark is promoting two of NVIDIA's graphic cards, the RTX 2080 and the GTX 1063 GB. The press release states that the game was optimized for a seamless frame game experience on the GeForce cards, and players who buy these cards will also receive in-game credits to spend in Lost Ark. Developer Spellgate also finally gave some long-awaited hints to a potential Western release for the MMO. Due to current issues regarding the Chinese game market and international games, Smallgate CEO Kwon Hyungbin has confirmed that the developers will be turning their focus to bringing Lost Ark to the West. We'll keep you posted on any developments. And just before the weekend, Korean developers Come To Us held a showcase for the newest title, Danceville, that is scheduled to be released in January. Danceville is a mobile game that is said to have the unique concept of dance and music. Players can create and customize singer avatars, sing, dance and make music videos that they can then share with friends or on social media. Come to us held the showcase on the 14th, allowing players to get their hands on the game for the first time, as well as listen to the musical styles of popular idol group winner. Danceville's director, Lee Sok Pyo, spoke at the event, stating that he hopes players can reveal their own personalities through the songs, dance and music videos and the extensive customization options in the game. Danceville is scheduled to be released January 8th, but no word of plans for a global release just yet. We're nearing the end of Overwatch Contenders Korea Season 3, with Week 4 closing with 4 of the 8 playoff spots and 2 of the 4 relegation spots confirmed. And even though they're entering the home straight, there was still plenty of time for some last minute roster additions. Group A opened with Runaway vs Blossom on Saturday. The 1-3 loss sealed Blossom's relegation, though they did manage to scrape it together on map 4 and take Dorado, giving Runaway their second map loss of the stage so far. Sunday saw MVP Space take on O2 team, with MVP's victory locking in their playoff spot. And lastly, Geekstar vs WGS Armament happened on Monday, in which WGS just turned it to 11 out of nowhere and put on a surprisingly dominating 3-1 show to keep them in playoff contention. In the grip of death, Stormquake continued their rise after a shaky start with a 3-1 win against Kongdu Panthera. Meta Athena's 0-4 loss to Gen.G has put them out of playoff contention, and the titan matchup of Element Mystic and GC Busan Wave proved to be surprisingly one-sided, with Element Mystic's 4-0 victory securing their first seed spot and a near-flawless run for the next stage. But hey, stellar group stages haven't necessarily meant much for Element Mystic in the playoffs of the past, so here's hoping third time's the charm. Time is tight and time differences are no one's friends, so if you only have time to catch one of the games from week 4, then it has to be the GC Busan Wave vs Element Mystic game from the 16th. Scoreline aside, it's worth it alone just to see Element Mystic's DPS sparkle ascend, 
This kid was on Doomfist punching Farah's clean out of the sky. As for this week, there's a lot on the line since there are 4 spots left and 6 teams in contention. But if you can only catch one game, the O2 team versus WGS RMN on the 24th is likely to be the deciding game for the 4th playoff spot from Group A. And with WGS's recent surprising performance from last week, who knows how it'll go. As always, you can catch the games on the official Overwatch Contenders Twitch channel, or if you're here in Seoul and want to catch a game live, tickets are still available online via Interpark. This week, Meta Athena has a new but very familiar face amongst its roster, with Genji Legend and North American Contenders Champion Who Are You joining the lineup. Philadelphia Fusion has confirmed that Who Are You is still under contract for Fusion University, and is only on loan to Meta Athena. This comes after another round of attitude issue rumours that seem to follow Who Are You around constantly, though it looks like it will be a relatively short-lived deal since Meta Athena is now officially out of playoff contention. And in other new addition news, freshman Orb Geekstar has added a 7th player to their roster with support player Dobie. We didn't see him against WGS on Monday since he was only announced on the 15th, but there is a good chance we'll see him on the 23rd in their match against Blossom because, well, it's Blossom. And to close out this week, Fox has announced that they have rebranded. They plan to start anew as White Whale Incheon Esports, WIE for short, going into the new year. May their mascot's regal moustache bring them all the luck they lacked in 2018. As it's the holidays next week, we won't be releasing a news video. But we will be releasing a video on our top 3 Korean games of 2018, so please keep an eye out for that. So that's it for today. See you guys next week. Bye bye! bye, -bye.